Hey yo, N4 H and H here. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm out here working on the the X50A diamond there, that dual band base station VHF UHF antenna. Well, you know, if you watched the previous video about it, uh, we had the deck redone and I got a new bracket system there to to hold it up. And I ordered two uh, five foot steel mast sections. So I had these two, the tan ones, that's two eight foot sections that I bought at Radio Shack decades ago. Wow, like, hmm, at least 30 years. And so I wanted to raise it up a little higher. I did not reattach the guy ropes. You can see where the guy ropes can go because it, they really haven't proven to be necessary. And in fact, the one time this antenna came down was when a limb from a tree over that way fell on the guy rope and, and pulled on the guy rope and pulled the antenna over. Now where it bent, it didn't bend on the steel sections. I had some copper sections here that I had bought at Lowe's they're four and a half feet long. I said copper. They're copper colored. They were aluminum. And of course they were the weak point and it just folded over and it wound up laying over there by that door that goes into my shack. And yes, I need to pressure wash that patio. So I, I was searching for these mass sections and I mean they were, I could get like a 10 foot section. Mm, I think it was 50, 60 bucks. No, no, it wasn't quite that much, 40 maybe. But then it was like $248 shipping. So I found a supplier here in the US for these five foot sections, heavy duty steel, both of them shipped for a little over $50, okay? So what I did the last time in the previous video, I just put one section in. So I, I, uh, I got the antenna up, it's about 10 feet off the ground, the deck. So I got the antenna up about, um, well, subtracting a little bit for the brackets there. Probably 28 feet to the base. Two 16 foot sections, a five foot sections, that's 21. Plus the height of the deck would be 31, but then minus a couple of feet there for going down to the brackets. So I just added five, five foot section. All right, so now it's gonna be up, it'll probably be around 33 feet but I went in and tested it, and this is what I want you to get from this video. With VHF, UHF, I mean, look at this. The houses back there are higher than me. Back there gets higher. In front of my house is higher. Only to the west is the land level. So there's obstructions here. I mean, look at those houses up there. Those houses are higher up than my antenna is even now. So one of the things about VHF and UHF is foliage can affect the signal. And of course, objects, especially in the near field, but even to some extent in the far field. So the truth of the matter is, you know, we're conditioned to think we'll get the antenna up as high as you can. And the truth of the matter is, if you can't get it up high enough to clear every obstacle, then you gotta move it up and down a little bit until you find the sweet spot for what repeaters you wanna hit, for example. And so I just checked a few and it's, uh, it's better on a couple, but worse on others. So you gotta kinda, you know, find your happy medium. So uh, I'm actually going to lower it a little bit. Now I may not lower it all the way down. You see where the section is. That section there was all the way down in the bracket. I'm gonna see if there's a happy medium maybe lowering it a little bit and you know i may i usually do this in six inch increments to and then go check it and see you know i'm trying to find a sweet spot okay i'll be back okay y'all i came in the house and i've uh, listened to a few repeaters to see if they're stronger or weaker um and oh and i yeah i lowered the pole six inches i may go do one more six inch increment and see how it settles there uh but in general a little bit better on uh, one repeater. Uh, see that one there. We'll see. It's just into the red. I'll see how that how that goes. 
that's not an exceptionally strong repeater, but it's uh, it's not too far away. As a matter of fact, about, I don't know, 15 miles, maybe 18 miles, but it's a lower power uh, repeater. Now, the one there in Monroe, that's a good haul, that 440 repeater there. So we'll see where it lands when I go out there and move it down another six inches. So I've gone, I've gone up a total of five feet from where I was. So now basically I'm gonna come down and maybe now the difference will be four feet from what it was before. Uh, let me see if there's anybody on, a, on any of these two meter repeaters here. You can hear. Okay, Sandy Springs there, full scale. See if there's anybody else in there. That one there is uh, on the top of the Bank of America in downtown Atlanta. So uh, it, it should be full scale. Now I'll test it. N4 H and H testing. N4 H and H clear. Okay, that looks good. Uh, this one, Georgia Tech, that's also downtown. N4 H and H testing. N4 H and H clear. Okay, full scale. Covington, eh, good good ways out. Um, I doubt I can get into that one. Yeah. Stockbridge, that's a haul too. Maybe on a cool, chilled morning, I might get that one. You know, you, you get a little more range on two meters with a little chill in the air in the morning. Gainesville, that one's close. It's It's usually full scale. That's another one near Gainesville, north of me here. Well, that guy I usually get easily. Mansfield, not always. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Cartersville, good bit of a haul. I can usually hear that one, though. You know, you just have to decide, though, which ones are more important to you. Now, Fayetteville, yeah, I might have tripped, might have tripped that one. I doubt they can hear me. I'll ID anyway. N4 H and H for ID. N4 H and H clear. Villarica, bit of a haul out uh, west Georgia, uh, not too far from the Alabama border. And here I am, you know, northeast of Atlanta. But let's see. Got in a little bit there. N4 H and H testing. N4 H and H clear. That little chopping you're hearing there, uh, that's my wife's uh, wireless phone charger plugged in. I need to go ahead and plug that. Clarksville, very iffy. I barely tripped it. Doubt they can even hear me. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. And then there's one, a lot of those you see like that, those are probably the only thing I might hear them under tropospheric ducting. Um, Barnesville, long haul. Rome, Georgia, also a long haul. But sometimes that one comes in. Let's see. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. Yeah, that's it. I gotta go and plug that uh, phone charger. Tacoa. That one's on top of uh, a mountain in Tacoa, Georgia. It's a little bit of a haul from here. Okay, that one, yeah, I wouldn't be able to get it. I'm barely tripping it. So I'll go move it down another six inches, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so you can see, before I had this up there, so I'm going to lower it. Look at that. I can see the moon up there. See the moon? Okay, I'm going to lower another six inches and see what happens. You know, basically you're just trying to punch through the foliage to get where you want to go. Okay, as you can see, it's about a, about a foot down now. So let's see what happened with that. This should put me at uh, roughly 32 feet. Okay, I'm going to take an exact measurement from the ground. Bear with me. So it is basically five feet, five and a half inches. So roughly five and a half feet to the, to the bottom there. And that is 26 feet of mast, okay? So, so 31 feet is about 
a little over 31 feet. Okay, so you know, it's a little bit of trial and error. I'll tell you, you know, that this was a minor difference, but uh, you know, this Jasper repeater, which is a powerhouse of a repeater, I could probably lower the antenna a little more and make it full scale, <laughs> okay? You know, it's, it's, you just got to figure out which way. It's not quite full scale. Um, I heard somebody talking a minute ago, and it was just barely, it was in the red, you know, about a third of the way in the red. I could lower it a little more and probably bring that one in full scale. It wasn't full scale even when the antenna, when the uh, mass was fully extended. So that's what I'm saying. You got to figure out where you want your best coverage. You know, this one here. I heard a while ago also is up above, up into the red, but not full scale. It's not too far away. I told you, it's, you know, I don't know, 15 miles, maybe 18. I'd be curious to see about this one. Pretty good. N4 H and H testing N4 H and H clear. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty good for that one. It's not always in the red. Yes, by the way, there is a between Georgia. Matter of fact, that Monroe repeater down there in the 440 area is, is that's also in between. Well, I'm barely tripping the Decatur machine. And that one, you know, depending on where the antenna is, it can come in almost full scale. So you see foliage. It's hot out there right now as well. In fact, it's 80, it's 84 and we've got a high humidity, a lot of foliage. So, you know, you, you may know this two meters, uh, better in, is better in the winter time. Chilled air in the morning too. Hmm. Hitting that Conyers machine pretty good there. Let me ID just in case N4 H and H testing N4 H and H clear. I got to unplug that charger. That's what that pulsing is. So there's the Georgia Tech machine. I think I checked it a while ago. There's the one on the, uh, the bank. Yeah, it's full scale. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. That airport one is very iffy all the time. Looks like somebody's talking on the Covington repeater. It's it's one that's not gonna come in super strong. Um, all right, I'm gonna go lower it another six inches and just see what happens. Okay, I measured all the antennas at 31 feet. Now that's at the base of the antenna. So uh, this Decatur machine, remember a while ago I wasn't able to, I think I'm, I don't even know if I was able to trip it. Let me see. Okay. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. All right, so that's, see, that's an improvement. And then it came down another, basically six inches. Uh, I'm at about, uh, well, I measured it this time with the tape. I'm at 31 feet. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. There's the bank. Surely that one will come in, airport. Yeah, that one's very iffy. Those are no problem. Let me see that Tacoa repeater. Mm, it's still kind of iffy. All right, I don't know, I may leave it there. Let me check this uh, 440 repeater. Because my, my friend Wendell lives out that way and that's the only repeater we can really communicate on. That's nice and solid. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. All right, um, I may go with that for a while. Well, thanks for watching videos on my channel. I hope that... <laughs> There's Wendell. I'll go back to him in just a moment. Thanks for watching videos on my channel. I hope you learned a little something from this about VHF, UHF, punching through the foliage. Higher is not always better unless you can clear everything, every obstacle around you. All right. Hey, again, thanks for watching videos on my channel. 
Please hang around for another half minute or so so I can acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers, Wendell's one of them, who bring these videos to you. Without them, you wouldn't have seen this video or hundreds of others. So I want to acknowledge five of them and thank them for their support of this channel and this content. All right, 73 from N4H&H. &H.